Thanks to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Being a YouTuber seems to be becoming more and more appealing for so many people, and I completely get why. You see YouTubers seemingly live these lives. That looks like a lot of fun and they make good money, so it seems like the dream job. I'm obviously biased because I make YouTube videos, but I think YouTube is a fantastic thing to do. You learn to be multi-skilled in different departments, all the way from talking to camera to managing deals with brands. However, I never planned to be a YouTube creator, and it's funny because I still don't refer to myself or see myself as a YouTuber. I started as a designer and web developer, but somehow I just fell into doing YouTube for fun, which then somehow evolved into this amazing business for me. Because of that, that I've made a lot of mistakes and I've also learned a lot along the way. So if I were to start over again, this is what I would avoid and the advice I would give to someone who is starting out new. Defining what the purpose is. So this doesn't have to be decided right away, but I think it really helps a lot because I knew that when I was making my first YouTube channel, I wanted to make videos on tech and gear. That's what I loved. That's what I wanted to focus on. Same with this channel. When I started this channel many years later, I wanted to make content about business and finance, teaching and sharing things that I've learned over the years. Having a defined purpose really helps keep a focus on the type of content you want to create. It also actually makes things a lot simpler as you'll be saying no to most ideas to help keep that focus. Now, that doesn't mean you need to define the purpose of your channel right away. I definitely feel like for some people, they don't really know what they want to make videos about, but they just want to make videos. And I think that's completely fine. Just making videos just for the sake of making videos, that's completely fine. I think in that time, you should be able to figure out, you should be able to sort of work out what you want to make videos about. Making the creation process as simple as possible. So something that has stopped me countless number of times when it comes to making videos is that I used to just make things way too complex, whether that's setting up lots of different cameras, setting up different setups to shoot videos and stuff, just a lot of work really. And then I realized actually, if I want to make videos, I need to remove as much friction as possible. I need to make the video creation process as simple as possible. So there's three things that I focused on, removing barriers, so removing barriers to entry to making content, making it efficient, making sure that it's as streamlined as possible, and then making it quick. I don't want to have to spend lots of time setting up cameras, setting up things. I just wanna be able to sit down and start recording. So what I ended up doing is making a permanent video setup. This whole studio for me is just for making videos. I wanted a space where I can just sit down, sit behind a desk, sit on my stool, hit record on my camera and start recording right away. And I think for a lot of people that can be very, very helpful. If you're someone who's easily distracted or just has any friction when it comes to doing something, I think removing that friction can really help a lot when it comes to getting things done. Don't worry too much about perfection. So at the beginning when starting a channel, if you're new to making videos, they're going to be nowhere near perfect. You'll hear lots of creators talk about quantity over quality and it makes sense because for every new video you make you'll be improving a ton in the first 50 to 100 videos only when you've got most things on lock is it really worth spending the time on perfecting other things over editing so this is something i used to be guilty of i used to think to myself that i needed to add all these cool flashy animations that i needed to add lots of music lots of sound effects and i realized actually they don't really add much to the videos if you ever go back and watch old movies, old TV shows, old YouTube videos, you'll see that they actually keep things very, very simple. And that's on purpose because the content itself in the video should be what's engaging. Not all the flashy animations, not all the crazy sound effects or anything like that. Just keeping it simple really, really helps. The issue with this stuff is that it not only ages badly, but it also takes up a lot of time and effort. And most of that time spent will not really add much to the video. If you are interested in starting your own channel, video sponsor HubSpot have put together 18 free YouTube templates for those starting their own channels. It includes 10 YouTube image templates so you can get the right image dimensions for various branding elements for a YouTube channel, whether that's a channel logo, banner, or thumbnails. Having the correct dimensions ensures a polished and professional look for your content. We all know how important video descriptions are for SEO and viewer engagement. The seven included YouTube description templates offer a variety of formats tailored for different types of content. This can help you convey information effectively, improve discoverability, and encourage audience interaction. On top of all of this, there's an extensive YouTube roadmap planning template, ideal for those who want to make sure they're following the right plan to get their channel in tip-top shape. It outlines key steps and milestones to follow in order to build and grow a successful channel. This comprehensive roadmap covers content creation, audience engagement, and overall channel management, making it an essential resource for those who want to navigate their YouTube journey strategically. These templates can serve as a starting point for new creators and a refresher for experienced ones. So make sure to check it out. It's completely free, link in the description below. Having a basic script or outline. So I used to wing a lot of videos, just turn on the camera, hit record and just 
sort of say whatever I thought I needed to say. But when I go back and watch those old videos, especially the first few videos that I made, they were really bad. There was a lot of fluff in those videos. There was a lot of stuff in those videos that didn't really actually add much value to the video itself. I used to end up having portions of my video where I'm recording like this, where I kind of just sat there for like a minute or two trying to figure out what to say. So the camera's rolling for a minute or two, and then that ends up being like an hour or two of recording video because I haven't actually figured out what I'm going to say. Having a rough script, having bullet points of what I'm going to say has helped me massively when it comes to video creation. I don't really have a proper script where I'm saying things word for word because that's not really my style. But I do like to use bullet points. I do like to make sure I have notes in front of me just to make sure that I cover what I need to cover and I don't have any fluff. Buying too much gear. So I fell into the trap of wanting to buy every bit of gear that I possibly came across. I used to think that to be a great content creator, you needed a ton of gear. So I'd watch lots of videos from other creators who were buying all these different types of gears, lighting, uh, sort of cameras, accessories, all these different things. And I used to think, yeah, I need that. Yeah, I need this. Yeah, I need to get that. I need to get that. It's going to make my life better. It, it really doesn't. It's one of the biggest mistakes that I made, I think. I have so much gear just around my studio and at home that I barely use. I probably only used it once or twice and I think to myself, what a waste of money that was. And I've realized now after making videos for so many years, you actually don't really need much. You need the essentials, you need the sort of basic stuff, anything else that you might need, you can just rent or borrow from elsewhere. I do still fall into the habit of seeing new gear and wanting to buy it. And I think that's just the sort of gadget, sort of interested person that I sort of am. I'm just into that sort of thing. But now I think very, very carefully. I have a basic criteria when it comes to buying stuff. Number one is how often am I actually going to use it? Number two is, is it going to save me time? Is it going to save me time in my production sort of studio setup or whatever? And number three, am I buying it because it looks cool or do I actually need it? As long as I follow that basic criteria, it ends up stopping me from buying stuff that I don't actually need because then I realize, yeah, this is just gonna be a waste of money. The things that I really do spend money on are things that are going to save me time, things that I'm actually going to use a lot, that are going to benefit my production when it comes to making videos. If I were to boil it down to the gear that I actually need when it comes to making videos, all I need really is one main camera, one camera that can really do it all, one good all-round lens, one lens that can cater to most setups, that's usually like a zoom lens, one good key light, like the light I'm using here, and one easy to use mic solution. I don't wanna to have to mess around with lots of different mics or with lots of different setups. I just wanna be able to get good quality audio every time. And that's actually been the thing that I have really been very strict on trying to sort out because the thing with audio is, you need high quality audio. Like high quality audio matters a lot when it comes to video. There's even a study somewhere out there that apparently when the audio quality of a video or the audio quality of a person speaking, is higher quality, you're more likely to take them seriously and you're more likely to think that they're smarter, which is wild, but it also makes a lot of sense. Now that we've covered some of the mistakes that I've made, I want to now move on to some advice that I would have for new creators. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. So many people fall into the trap of doing it for all of the wrong reasons, unfortunately. Maybe it's to become famous, maybe it's to get clout, or simply they feel like because everyone else is doing it, they have to do it too. There's two main reasons why I think most people should do YouTube, to express creativity or to make money. And making money is not a bad thing. And I think it can actually be a good thing because if you can turn something that's a hobby, something that's creative into something that can make money, that can make it sustainable. That means you can continue to do it because it's helping pay the bills. I personally started making videos because it covers both of those things. I wanted to be creative. I really love cameras. I really love video record. I, like I've always just been interested in cameras and making videos and stuff from a young age, but I also wanted to make money. I, I want to make money. I've never shied away from I want to do this for making money. If YouTube didn't make me money, I don't think I would put anywhere near as much effort as I do right now into it. I might do it here and there, but because it makes money, it really helps sustain my both of my YouTube channels, really helps sustain this business that I have. Stop the flashy, fast-paced content. So unfortunately, many people fall into the trap of making very flashy, over-edited content. And sometimes there is nothing wrong with it. Mr. Beast has perfected it. He is the master at it. And it clearly works because it's his style. However, too many people have looked at Mr. Beast and thought to themselves that they can apply the same style to other types of videos. But unfortunately, that's not really how it works. I think it's important to match the editing style, the music and all these sorts of things to the type of video you're making. It doesn't mean you have to make one type of video. If you're someone who wants to try lots of different forms of, of videos, please do that. 
but obviously a lot of people like i said are just falling into the trap of they think that every single video needs to be like a f fast flat flashy sort of video with lots of different animations and stuff yeah i, I just feel like it's made a lot of topics and a lot of things not that interesting because I want to be able to just relax. I want to be able to watch stuff that I can take in rather than it keeps cutting, it keeps changing and there's all sorts going on. Yeah, for a lot of people, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. I think what's more important is developing your own style, developing something that suits who you are and what you want to create. Sam Siluk is a great example of this, who is just the complete opposite of Mr. Beast. All he does is simple vlogs of him talking to camera, sharing his day, sharing his thoughts. He has no crazy music, no flashy editing. He just keeps it super simple, yet he's getting hundreds of thousands, millions of views because that's what people want. People just want to be able to sit down, watch a 30 minute, 40 minute, maybe an hour long video from him whilst they're eating dinner, maybe whilst they're working or something, just have him on in the background. It's almost like having a friend there. And that's why his content really works for him. That style really works for him. And I think that sort of style is also coming back. I think people have realized actually the flashy, fast paced content isn't really that popular. I like to think that I have my own style. I like to keep things pretty simple, especially when it comes to editing. And I like to focus more on the aesthetics. I like putting effort into my setup and the aesthetics and things because that's where I like to be creative. Even the way I talk from what everyone else tells me is that I'm quite calm and smooth. And what's funny is that in real life, I feel like I'm the complete opposite. My real life persona is quite the opposite of YouTube. I'd say in real life, I'm a lot louder, a lot faster paced, a lot more, you know, just boisterous, you could say. So yeah, it's funny, like my YouTube persona doesn't really match who I am in real life. But I think that's just because I just prefer being sort of a bit calmer when it comes to making videos. YouTube can be a great form of marketing for your business. So if you have a business using YouTube, as a marketing funnel is huge. Like I feel like a lot of people think to themselves, YouTube is a place where all they're going to do is just like watch entertainment or whatever, or just watch random videos. But YouTube can be a great way if you already have a business using it as a funnel to get new customers to your business. And I think a lot of companies are now catching on. They've realized that using YouTube as a funnel, as a place to share things about their business can really help grow their business. For example, if you have a software company, you can use YouTube to share tutorials, product launches, feature updates, success stories. These sorts of things, they're not going to make money directly through AdSense or sponsors or anything like that. But if people are searching for different tutorials for your software, if you're able to share what your software can do, these are great ways to market the business, to market your software, to make money, to get new customers. Another example is product companies, tech companies. So I do this on my tech channel. Companies come to me, they have a new product and they want to share that product. They want to get new eyes in front of that product. So what they'll do is they work with me, they'll sponsor my videos and they'll have their product in my video, but they can also upload their own videos sharing their products on their own channel. They can be showing what you can do with their products. There's just so many different ways that YouTube can be used to make money. It doesn't necessarily just have to be through sponsorships and AdSense. Faceless YouTube channels. So faceless channels are becoming more and more popular. I'm seeing them come up a lot more these days. And I've realized, especially when it comes to YouTube, the idea of having your face on camera, it, do it doesn't need to be a thing anymore. I simply do it because I'm used to it now. Like it's just one of my things. And for me, the reason why I also like to share my face is that it helps build sort of brand authority. I think having a person that someone can connect with, it feels a lot more sort of intimate than just a voice that you don't really see. And because of that, people naturally trust what I have to say more, but that's just me. I've also said in the past that if I could start again, I probably would have started a channel that's faceless. However, I think when it comes to making this sort of content, finance business related content, I don't think it really makes sense to make it faceless. I think it's better to have a face, someone who's actually has some experience, who's done it. And this is why I have this channel, right? I, I want to share that sort of stuff. But for my tech channel, if I were to start my tech channel again, I probably would do it faceless. There have actually been some videos that I've done where my face hasn't been in it pretty much at all. And that's completely fine because my tech channel, it's not really about me. The tech channel is about the products, it's about the tech, it's about the gear that I'm covering. It's never too late to start a channel. So a common thought that a lot of people have is that it's too late or it's too saturated. It's only saturated because you're probably thinking about making the same content as someone else. The way I like to see YouTube is that it's like TV shows and movies. Every type of TV show and movie has already been made. Most things now are simply a remix. It's very rare to see something completely original. There are no original ideas really. So don't worry about having to come up with something original. I think the best thing about content creation about making YouTube videos is that 
you can really have your own spin on things you can do things your way maybe if you see something and you think to yourself actually i could do that differently or actually there's a topic there that maybe someone else hasn't covered that i would like to cover that's a great way to make youtube videos like that's just a fantastic way to grow an audience They're doing stuff that just take something else but then adds your own spin on it just you're sort of adding your own remix to it being cringy is okay so i look back at my old videos and cringe all of the time but it's completely okay i've just sort of gotten used to it because when you first start something you will be bad at it it's like starting anything new in life no one sits at a piano and then suddenly is able to play the interstellar theme tune i mean i bring that up because i love interstellar but yeah no one can do that it takes time a lot of practice to become better at the piano like anything and that's the same with creating high quality videos it's a skill that takes time keeping your private life private so something i'm glad i did and continue to do is keep my private life private it's not something that i'm actively hiding it's just not something that's really relevant to my content my friends and family also don't want to appear on camera because just imagine just imagine someone came up to you and pointed their camera at you and then they just suddenly expect you to perform like a monkey it doesn't really make any sense they suddenly expect you to say something funny or do something funny or like, i don't know whatever it's just not fair at all like that would be my worst nightmare even though i'm used to being on camera if someone just suddenly pointed a camera at me and was like hey do something i'll be like no this is really awkward and that's why i don't really share my friends and family on camera because of that most people think i have a pretty lonely life no friends or anything when in reality i'm sleeping with their mother what did he say so yeah would highly advise keeping your private life private if it's not really going to add anything to whatever you're doing right now putting intent into sponsorships so this is more for people who maybe have a bit more of an established channel but something that i've done is be very intentional with the brands that i align so i get lots of random brands in my inbox just wanting me to promote all sorts of things but i decline i'd say 90 percent of them because 90 percent of them are just rubbish i'm very picky with the brands that i accept the brands that i share because i want to make sure that they align with my core values and that they actually make sense to my audience. So rather than just accepting the first sponsorship deal that comes your way, try to figure out whether it aligns with your brand, your channel, the content you want to make, and whether you would actually be proud to work with them and be, be happy to share that with your audience. Authenticity will pay off a lot in the future. It's one of those things where at the beginning, you might not really think about it too much, but as you grow, as you realize how important and how valuable your own brand is, you don't really want to be associated with companies and brands that may hurt it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So for anyone interested, I do have a course, which is basically all about making high quality videos, not necessarily for YouTube, just about making high quality videos. And the idea is that, and the reason why I've put this course together is because it basically saves years of time and learning. There's a lot of things in there that I wish I had learned earlier on. It also helps you sort of have systems in place. There's a lot of checklists, systems and templates and everything. So yeah, if you guys are interested, make sure to check out, follow me on Instagram and Twitter where I post a lot of other random stuff and subscribe for more.